Hello, I'm Debbie Darnell from Darnell & Associates, and I'm coming to you today as a licensed mental health counselor, a child mental health specialist, and a marriage and family specialist in collaboration with Lewis County Head Start to on a project that we're working on about making some small videos that you can watch at home dealing with different topics. And so today, my first video will be about constant change and how to manage through constant changes. So I'm going to be giving some tips today um, to, to help you look at change a little bit differently. I'm also going to be adding in some fun little activities that you can do at home with your kids that will help your children manage change a little bit differently and give them some tools um, to kind of utilize as we're going through constant um, constant rules and constant restrictions and constant changes. So everybody just take a big deep breath and relax and we'll get started on um, learning some of those tips. Okay, so the very first tip I want to give people about constant change is uh, one of the things that's most stressful for folks is to have change that is happening to them that they have no control over. So one of the challenges I give folks all the time is to think about when the change is going on, think about all the things that you can be in charge of and have control over. This little circle of control is something that I keep in my office to remind folks that they can be in charge of certain things that are happening to them. So in the circle of control, the amount of effort that you put into making changes and making sure that's smooth, you can be in control of that. You can be in control of your words, what you're saying to people and how to be safe with your words and talking and communicating. You can be safe with your actions, my behavior, how I treat other people. I can be in charge of that. If I'm stressed out, I can still be in charge of being polite, of being courteous and saying thank you and please. Um, whether or not I follow the rules, this is a really good one for little kids to start building their toolbox on how to handle change is what they can be in charge of and following directions and listening is a great place to start. How do I handle my feelings is another area of control. How do I handle my feelings safely during this change? My decisions and choices. Um, how I take care of myself. And I love the one about taking care of yourself. Um, sometimes when we're going through stress, um, through change, we forget to do that. We forget to eat or we forget to get enough sleep or we forget to take breaks. So those are the kinds of things that you can really look at to be in charge of. Things that you can't control are listed on the bottom. Things like what other people do and say, other people's decisions and choices. Um, things like your past, the mistakes that you've made um, in the past. You can't be in control of that anymore. It's in the past. Um, what other people are feeling. Never are you responsible for how somebody else feels. And of course, the weather. We can never be in charge of the weather or some of the changes that we're hearing about um, in the world today. So what can I be in charge of and what can I not be in charge of this is my first tip. Okay, so my first tip for managing constant change is to add humor and be positive. I know this sounds silly to put it on the top, but whenever I'm going through changes and I'm trying to do things a little bit different or getting used to something, I try to find the humor of the situation. And Rose is here today with her fish hat to kind of remind me that sometimes life can be silly. And so Adding humor where you can and where it's appropriate it helps with our own sense of um, feeling and trying to focus on the things that are working and that feel positive. I'm going to put Rosa down now so she can run around with her fish hat on. One of the things that I did with my own children in the early stages of the quarantine and stay at home order, um, I had a pickle jar. Actually, it's an old pickle jar that I got and I cleaned it up. We had a jar like this that every day I would ask my kids to write down something that they were proud of, write down something that they felt good about, write down something that they noticed was going on that was good for somebody else, and put it in the jar throughout the day. You could do it more than once if you want to, but what happens is at the end of the day, around dinner time, we would sit down and we would pull one of those things out. Um, and kind of remember that there are good things going on in the middle of all these changes and trying to figure that out. 
So that's a little activity you could do at home with your kids. Um, it's really just kind of a reminder that we are doing a good job and look for the humor. Make jokes out of things where you can. Okay, so we've talked about what we can be in charge of. We've talked about adding humor. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the feelings that constant change brings up. Um, lots of feelings come up when we're going through these kinds of changes from uncertainty to worry to anger to frustration. It's really good to build into your process as you're going through this to talk a lot about the feelings and to acknowledge them. Um, that being said, the other thing that I want people to think about as they're talking about feelings is to also not only notice that the feeling is happening, but also learning how to problem solve with that feeling. Um, we can't stay stuck in our feelings forever. We need to be able to figure out what we can do with that feeling and how to make it more helpful for us. One of the suggestions I have on this slide is setting up a time with your children for worry time. And what I would do is set a good 15 minutes to half hour time each day to sit down with kids and talk a little bit about what are the things they might be hearing during in the media. If children are getting getting little pieces of news or hearing grown ups, talk about what they're what they're hearing and to talk about the feelings that that might cause the worry that might, that might come up for them. A great idea. A little tool that you can do at home and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you this now is to set up a worry box in my practice I work with little people all the time and one of the things that we do to try to take worries out of you where you're not carrying them around all day we try to teach them to um, put them on a shelf so to speak and so what I would suggest is to get an old box this is an old box that I had laying around um, get an old box, it doesn't have to be huge like this one, but get a box and this one has a lid like this. Get a box, it could be any kind of box, um, you might even want to put a lid on it. Get a box and sit down with your kids and you can decorate it, put stickers on it, different colored pieces of paper. Um, and this officially becomes the worry box. And in the worry box, you can even cut a hole in the top and, and do this. But I advise when kids are really worried and it seems too big of a worry to do anything about, um, and we've had our worry time, we can then draw that worry out or we can write it on a piece of paper and we put it in the box. And you can either put a slash thing in it, like I said, or you could throw it in the box and we put it in there. Um, and we keep it in the box so it doesn't have to stay in, in your brain all day and it doesn't have to make you feel yucky all day. I love worry boxes because it teaches kids containment. And it might even be good for you as a grown up to do your own piece of little worry box for yourself. I mean, if you want to throw something in to model for your kids, that would be great. Um, that is a great way to help kids manage the anxiety of many, many changes. Asking questions. Um, as your child is acknowledging feelings, it's, it's okay to talk a lot about what can we do with that feeling? What can we do with that worry? We can put it in the worry box. Or is there something we can do to make you feel better? Um, helping them move through feelings into a problem solving mode is an invaluable lesson and teaches them to kind of think on their feet. Um, the other important thing I wanted to note on this slide is to explain the changes that are going on for the, for your little people. Um, explain it in their age group terms, but we as adults are, number one, I, I think of a really good quote that I heard years and years ago, which helps me kind of remember what my job is with my children, and that is to, to add the calm to the storm that's happening. With every changes, well, all the changes that are going on, um, we are the calm for our children. We are the people who are supposed to break down what's happening to make them under, understand it and feel safe. So let that guide you a little bit as you're explaining changes and we'll move on to another activity. All right, we're still talking a little bit about feelings and acknowledging them. One of the things that I would also, um, a fun little activity to do with kids and something that I do in my practice a lot, um, particularly, um, with little kids ages three and four they don't have a whole huge concept on how to talk about feelings and so this is an activity for them that that will help um you can go get an old ball an old bouncy ball this one this one i've had for a really long time so it's kind of it's kind of flat um but go get a bouncy ball like this get yourself a permanent marker 
This one's not permanent. It's washable because I like to use this ball for, for like washing and redoing. But take the ball and write down a bunch of different feelings. I think, ooh, this one kind of rubbed off. But this one has worried, scared, happy, sad, any kind of feeling silly. Um, I think I put frustrated on here and disappointed. Um, go ahead and write all the different feelings all over the ball. And you might even get your kids to help. Help sit down and think of all the different feelings. Um, number one, it kind of gives them a buffet of words to use. And then my favorite part, we call it feeling ball. Sit around and toss the ball. Tossing a ball is a great way to just kind of be goofy and silly and do something with that energy. But you can also make a little game about it called the feeling ball, which is when you're tossing the ball around and you catch it, whatever this thumb lands on, you get to talk about that feeling. My one just tired, my thumb just landed on tired. So have your kids talk about where was it, what was the last time you felt tired? What does tired feel like? It really is a great activity for giving your kids a way of talking about different feelings in a random, fun, engaging way. The other thing I would suggest is um, there's a couple of really cool books. Um, one of them, my favorite one, uh, which is about um, which is about like feelings, but it's also about people coming together and helping with this those feelings. It's called Bear Feels Scared, and really is a wonderful little book to teach about. Bear is there's a storm, a winter storm coming when Bear's lying in his cave, and he feels scared, and all of his forest little friends come and help him with that feeling. This is a great book to read when kids have a lot of worries. Okay, this is a great concept. This is mostly geared towards the grown-ups, but also um, change can also produce a lot of stress. Stress is uncertainty. Stress is we have things we have to problem solve and we have to get that done right. One of the things to keep in mind, and this is just something to help change your perspective when you can, is that stress actually makes us stronger. Stress actually builds a fancy word called resiliency in us. And resiliency just simply means that you've gone through some really hard, difficult things and you were able to get through it and you were able to be strong and you were able to be thinking and you were able to make good decisions. And so you were able to get through it and stay okay. So remember that stress can make you stronger and build your resiliency. So one of the questions I try to encourage folks to look at when they're going through something is asking, gosh, what am I learning? What am I learning? Um, you might be learning a new skill. You might be learning that you're pretty dang good at self-teaching your kids at home. You might be learning that, gosh, I can, I can do things at home and be pretty organized when I want to. Whatever the question may be, it could be about yourself. It could be about a situation. Ask yourself what you're learning and know that you're building up your strengths. Another good tip when we're talking about constant change is rather than being fearful and scared of things, ask yourself, what are my values? What, are, what is important to me during this time of change? And what are my fears? Um, if we focus on what's important to us, then the fears um, don't seem so scary. What's important to you? Um, like I said, we need to learn how to manage our feelings and acknowledge them and make sure that we're noting that. But we also need to, to problem solve and navigate through. And one of the things during change for me that helps is instead of focusing on my fears about the change, I tend to try to think about what is it that's important to me? What are my values? Um, what, what do I hold dear? So we're, and then work on building things up um, that you hold dear. Um, if it's a routine, trying to get things streamlined and, and part of normalcy, building a routine, that's great. If it's safety, making sure that your kids are wearing masks, that you're, that you're staying okay and you're distancing, that's great. If it's togetherness or connectedness, um, I know in my family during the initial stages of the big change that's going on in our um, country right now with the COVID-19 was to stay connected and to stay together and to really, really um, 
be able to communicate and say what we're thinking and how we're feeling on a daily basis. Keeping it positive, if that's what it's about, um, hold that dear and build that up, build ways, work on the things that you can do something about. Problem solving. The activity, the, the making of the jar, once again, I'm going to mention that um, it's really a really good tool to help keep that building up process going and to keep focus and and actually have my jar from from when I made it months ago um, this again is a pickle jar we, we like pickle jars at my house and in this jar I have a bunch of index cards this is actually the real jar that we use and every day people would write down things and throw them in the jar to kind of remember about and so I'm just gonna pull one out to kind of show people um, let's see I wrote at one point I wrote I'm still motivated um, I got organized and I got back to routine that was one of my kids wrote that so it's really a good little tool to have handy and remind people to write these things down, even for yourself, to write these things down in a jar just to kind of keep a daily reminder. Other tips that I have are limit social media, um, particularly if you have older kids, teens, there's there's TikToks, there's Instagrams, there's all kinds of, of information flooding our kids right now. And so limit that. The other thing I'm noticing in my practice is that um, lots of little tiny people coming in and they're worried because they heard something on the news or they heard people talking about it. So limit the social media, limit media if you can, and last thing is really explain to your little people what's happening for them because it is um, really important that we assure them and that we're listening to them and we can correct any kind of things that could implant and become a, a really serious worry. All right, one of the last tips I want to say about constant change um, is the idea of looking at the changes that are happening and what you can be in control of, but also looking at some of the things as a time to fix something that maybe didn't work as well as it did before. And I'm thinking about lots of folks during this pandemic have had to work from home and they found out that they can get just as much work at home done uh, more efficiently and staying safe and still being able to spend time with their kids. I'm thinking about all the online teachers that I know right now that are they're having to be really creative and how they're trying to get kids engaged online and doing their lessons. And I'm thinking about my own uh, Head Start program here in Lewis County and how the idea of videos can reach just as many people as um, actually going into the classrooms as well and reaching parents. So again, think of change as a time to fix things that didn't work so well or as a time to be really creative on how we want to move forward through the change. Last but not least, my final slide regarding constant changes is the idea of getting support from other people, from ourselves, and things that you can do to feel like you're on top of the changes. First thing I'm going to say is just ask for help when you need it. Um, it's important, and it's important to model to our kids to ask for help when we when we're out of ideas. The other thing is to help other people who you might see as needing something. When I work with um, tiny children around <clears throat> things that are problematic and they need help is asking for the helpers. Um, look for people who can help you and um, also offer help if you see somebody who needs it. Stay focused, stay in charge of what you can be in charge of and let the things that go that you can't be in charge of. Prepare on what you can do and have a plan about certain ideas Sit and think about what your plan might be through the changes. And above all else, give yourself a break and some grace and remind yourself that you're doing a really good job throughout all of it. All right, my last slide. I want to take a few minutes to say thanks for listening and to give a big thank you for being on here and letting us try a new idea for listening. And above all else, stay safe and take care of yourselves.